Right now, all new at 5.30, probably one of the most localized election stories that we had from last night. A vote last night to go dry came out of a small voting precinct in one section of the Clifton Heights neighborhood, prohibiting the sale of alcohol there. Well, it's targeted at one business in a mostly residential area. Our Ian Hartwit tells us what comes next for that bar owner. Your dynamic of your business changes immediately. A dry vote directed at Virtue Bar and Lounge on Brownsboro Road puts owner Tony Frank in a difficult position. Alcohol accounts for around 40% of his sales. We probably have one of the more profitable businesses, and now here we are saying, let's strip a small minority businesses on how they thrive, and let's kick them out, so to speak. Uh, I don't know if their foot's big enough to kick us out, because our goal is to be here. The gas station just a couple blocks up the road will still be able to sell alcohol since it falls outside of the voting precinct. Virtue, on the other hand, won't be able to since it's just inside the boundaries. Residents in the hills above the bar blame them for things like trash, packed streets, and violence and gunshots outside the business. Frank tried to address these concerns, but it wasn't enough to sway the vote. He hired more security, deployed an exterior camera, ordered extra dumpsters, and put up signs encouraging people to be a good neighbor. He shows me a packet left around the area detailing complaints against virtue, urging people towards the dry vote. According to the Jefferson County Clerk's Office, 79 people voted to go dry, no alcohol sales, defeating the 49 yes votes with less than half the precinct participating. It's outside partying and drinking and parking lots, gunshots in this area, parking has been another issue. That all is not true and I think the narrative has been twisted around to make it look like this is all because of us. Clifton Heights Community Council President Allison Johnson tells me through text, Nearby neighbors are mostly pleased, yet some are apprehensive regarding the possible repercussions. We'll have to file a legal appeal through the county attorney's office, uh, and it'll go through the circuit court, and we're prepared to do that. Frank says his business will stay despite the outcome. In Clifton Heights, Ian Hardwick, WHAS 11, on your side. Well, that ban begins 60 days after the vote is certified. These votes can be triggered by anyone in a precinct in this area, according to state law. They just need to gather enough signatures. Now, once again, check out our map to show you just how small of an area we're talking about. This small precinct runs between Brownsboro Road to the south and Melwood Avenue up to the north and right at I-71. Just over 100 impact residents are impacted. Last night, 125 total votes came in for and against.